The idea of the devil, evil incarnate, has irresistible symbolic force, and the character of Lucifer inhabits our greatest literature from Paradise Lost to Faust. But what about the devil not as a symbol, but as an actual willful being, a fallen angel in Christian belief that can not only affect human events, but enter human bodies? Tonight, we go inside the controversial and extraordinary rite of exorcism with my co-anchor Terry Moran for our series, Faith Matters. Ah, it burns! In Hollywood, exorcisms are full of spooky special effects and terrifying images. As in, most famously, the film, The Exorcist. I command you to depart from the servant of God. Emily, can you hear me? Or there's the battle with the devil in the movie, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Demons exist, whether you believe in them or not. But exorcism is more, much more, than just fodder for horror flicks. It is one of the most dramatic, profoundly moving, and profoundly controversial of all religious practices. Oh, no! Leave. No! No! Leave now, I command you. And in real life, this rare footage shows what actually happens in an exorcism. Don't let her go. Stop! I would do things that I wouldn't necessarily do, but so intense that it was like I was almost a puppet. Becky Parker is her name. She was possessed by demons, she firmly believes. And she has been saved, she affirms, by the love of God through the rite of exorcism. I'm happy because I found God. I found how to win the spiritual battle I was in. Tell me your name in the name of Jesus Christ. A spiritual battle. That's what the experience of exorcism feels like to those who go through it. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. And those who perform it. I do it because I think it's an incredibly profound opportunity to help in the healing ministry that this is fundamentally about. In, in a ministry where people are suffering tremendously. Father Gary Thomas is an exorcist, though he did not perform Becky Parker's exorcism. That priest preferred to remain anonymous. This is Jesus. The but Father Gary was trained in Rome, and for the past several years, he's been the official exorcist of the Diocese of San Jose, California. Father, is the devil real? I do believe the devil is real. I've had occurrences and experiences in my life where I believe I've seen the devil, I've seen demons, but you don't see Satan in the same way that you and I are looking at each other. There's plenty of evil in the world. God knoweth that, you might say. Plenty of cruelty, mayhem, and murder. But the devil? Satan is a pure spirit. He's an angel who fell. Certainly when I've been involved in the ministry of, of exorcism and at times prayed with people who have had a de demonic attachment, I have seen Satan. I have never met a psychiatrist that came to the conclusion the person was uh, possessed by a demon. Daryl Ray speaks for the other side, the secular take on these matters as a psychologist and atheist who thinks exorcism is not just a fantasy, but a dangerous one. We're diagnosing diseases now with brain scans that we couldn't diagnose even two and three years ago. What will happen in four or five years? The brain is an incredibly complicated organ. Uh, but the fact that some priest using 12th century technology can cure somebody is absurd. Faith versus doubt, the sacred versus the profane, that's the age-old conflict that exorcism crystallizes. <laughs> and it's the conflict at the heart of the latest Hollywood take on the subject, the right. Now, the interesting thing about skeptics, atheists, is that uh, we're always looking for proof, certainty. The question is, what on earth would we do if we found it? Anthony Hopkins in a bravura performance plays an exorcist, Colin O'Donohue, a young seminarian full of skepticism at the right. That's not the devil. It's just a very, very sick girl. 
She doesn't need a priest. She needs a shrink. The seminarian's character is loosely based on Father Gary Thomas and his experience training as an exorcist. How do you know that someone is possessed by a demon rather than just someone who's under tremendous psychological strain? There are specific signs. For example, if a person has an aversion to walking into a church and not be able to view uh, a crucifix or an image of Christ. Another sign could very well be if a person possesses um, a competency in a language that they otherwise couldn't speak. They can take on a serpentine look and coil up in a very serpentine body language manner. And I've seen that happen. I was shaking, I was screaming, I was different languages. Oh, Jesus. No, Becky God, Parker God. says she was possessed God, by as many as eight demons over many, many years. I know what they look like. I know how big they are. I know where they are in my body. You feel they're still there? No, they're gone. She's triumphed over a tough life. She says she was a victim of abuse as a child, turned to decades of drug abuse, worked as a prostitute, dabbled in the occult. Then she met Barbara Gange, a documentary filmmaker who was making a movie about exorcism for Paulist Productions, a Catholic movie house. ABC News has licensed her footage. Becky uh, was uh, part of a landscape crew that I had never seen her before, never met her, she'd never been to my house. She came to my door, knocked on the door and said, could I use your bathroom? And I said, sure. I was working on the yard and I was sober, clean and just doing what I could. And when she stepped out, her eyes went dark, her face distorted, and she started snarling at me. And she said, in this very strange voice, you don't know what you're messing with. We hate you. I wasn't even thinking. And then I ended up on the floor right here and contorting and screaming. It was the turning point of Becky's life. Barbara Gange put her in contact with a local Catholic priest who said the prayers of deliverance over her Christ, while Barbara's cameras rose. Speak, I command you, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> what was it like to have the priest pray the prayers of deliverance over you? I hated him. Like, I wanted to hurt him. It took everything for me not to... I was wanting to kick him and... I um, heard him and get away from him. In that process, do you remember feeling that there were demons being expelled? Do you remember oh, yeah. feeling being liberated? Delivered? Oh, yeah. What's your name? You remember that? Yeah. What was it like? The first time it happened was the most intense. My body totally collapsed. I never felt that type of relaxation. Are you there, Becky? Yes. What's my name? And so she was delivered. Becky is drug-free, married, and writing a book on her journey now. Some would say she was saved from the devil. Others argue she was mentally broken and the priest put her life at risk. People who are in that kind of condition are oftentimes potentially suicidal. And if they're not getting the proper treatment, they could kill themselves. The Catholic Church requires outside medical and psychological examinations before exorcisms are approved by local bishops. Still, skepticism abounds. Father, you know there are going to be plenty of people watching this who are going to look at you and listen to you and say you're a charlatan. How do you answer someone who says that? To believe that there is a Satan is an act of faith a leap of faith, in the same way that to say I can believe in God or I have a personal relationship with God is a leap of faith. In the same way when an atheist says, I really firmly cannot believe that God exists, that's also a leap of faith to believe in the denial of God. Demons, Satan, and the very real suffering in so many human lives. Exorcisms have been part of human religion since time immemorial. And today, in this modern world, the right is making a comeback.